Hello everybody, welcome to the favorites video. I haven't filmed one of these in a long time. We're gonna try to get through this as quickly as possible because I got a lot. <laughs> this is why I shouldn't wait so long. <laughs> I, don't, I think it's been years, honestly. But I have a basket of makeup, I have skincare, I have hair, I even have some stuff I keep on the side of the bed for some evening care. So we're gonna just dive into this. Now I can't spend a million minutes talking about why I love a product, but I think you can see that I love this. <laughs> and this is the second or third bottle I've gone through. Laneige has made magic milk for your skin. <laughs> It's so good. It just makes my skin feel so soft before I put all of my foundation on. It gives that prepped moisturizer without being a thick layer of moisturizer, which you have to then wait to sit in and really like absorb into your skin. So when you're doing your skincare before your makeup, just put a few little drops of it in my hand and then do this. You have to kind of do this so it doesn't drip, but then you press it into your skin. I don't rub it. I just press it into my skin all over and then give it a few minutes to dry and then I'm good to go for the rest of my makeup. But I just love it because I don't really want to put on a bunch of moisturizer before I'm about to start all of my makeup, my foundation, my concealing and all of that. But I like that this is lightweight. So I just absolutely love it. I've been wearing the Merit Foundation I saw a lot of people talking about it, so I had to get up on the hype. This little thing, it looks like a lipstick. It's its pretty small, so that's my only concern is how long is this going to last me? But I do alternate my base. I'll wear a BB cream one day. I'll wear just concealer and powder another. It just depends. And plus, I'm not tan right now. I have zero tanner on, and this is the color of my skin without tanner. So if I were to tan, obviously I'd have to switch. But for now, this is my go-to. And I really like how it's lightweight. It's a medium light coverage. So it's not a lot of makeup. And if you're just kind of hanging around the house, you plan on running some errands, you got a few things you got to do, but you don't really need full coverage. This is a really good foundation for that. So, you know, it has a little twist up. I've had this already kind of start to fall out a little bit there. So that, you know, isn't the best because you're afraid it's going to fall out and break. But I would say for now, it's my favorite as far as the way that it sits on my face, the coverage of it all, the color matches my skin perfect when I'm not tan. I like that it's an easy quick stick for application. I just draw on my face like a three-year-old. <laughs> just woo, bunch of little S shapes all over my face. And then I just take a brush and blend it in. And then where I need it, I'll do a little extra. And sometimes I don't conceal at all. I just wear this everywhere, blend it in, powder a little bit, done deal. This is really bold of me to put something in my favorites that I've only been using for a week. That's very rare. I have to try a product for a while because sometimes I change my mind. I'll love something when I first start using it and then I hate it or I'll hate something and then I'll start to love it. So it takes me a while to truly form an opinion about something. I'm not a very good first impressions makeup person. I just really need to know how it's going to perform, how my skin likes it, how it looks at the end of the day, different lighting, when I'm hormonal, when I'm not hormonal. I just kind of need to you know try it out so this one though i just recently got this in my ipsy subscription it's a brand i've never heard of it's called rhubarb and rose and it is a lip and cheek cream palette <sighs> when i tell you i love every single color in here it really shows on my skin tone nicely and all of these colors you would think this would come up really brown no this middle one is what i'm wearing right now it has a beautiful kind of rosy brick base to it i love i literally i love every single one i need like 10 of these because when i run out of any of these i'm gonna cry the only one i haven't tried yet is this coral color because it's end of summer i'm just not really reaching for it right now it also smells and I just put my nose in it. It kind of smells like, it reminds me of like strawberry shortcake or like one of my dolls I had when I was a kid or like a chapstick I smelled when I was a kid. It's got a very like youthful, playful makeup smell to it is the thing, but I really like it. And then you can use it on your lips. So if you take a little bit and just put it over your lip, it does a really nice blushed look. Or if you take a brush, which I did yesterday, and you apply it all over, it really, um, it's a nice finish. Another lip thing that I really like, I randomly, again, got this in my Ipsy. It's from a brand called Misha Beauty and I don't I'm not always familiar with some of these indie brands so I love having Ipsy this is not sponsored I'm an affiliate but I'm not sponsored I just talk about it because that's where I get so much of my makeup that I really like this is Beloved and Beauty and both of these are so close to my lip color I'm wearing Beloved right now with a little bit of gloss over top 
if I ever just want something on my lip that's just shaped out really nice because I don't have a lip line and I want to have like you know a nice shape to my lip with a natural look to it and I can just put some chapstick over top these are so my lip color like spot on one of them more than the other uh the one that's called beloved I put the beloved one on and I applied it everywhere is it beloved or beloved <laughs> Am I Shakespeare? Beloved. My beloved. It looks like my lip color, but enhanced. And that was always my rule when people would come in looking for a lip liner that looked natural on them when they would come into like the beauty stores that I worked at. I always said, let's find you one that's your lip color. So I'd look at their natural lip color and then I would just crank it up like two notches. And that's the lip color I would look for. Something that's like two shades darker than their natural color. Because most of us have a really light natural lip color. That was always the golden rule for finding that perfect lip tone this one is it for me look at how close soar is to it if you can see that see how close those two are in color and soar is i rebuy this all the time it's just my like backup go to misha beauty if you find it anywhere or if it's an add-on on ipsy and you have an ipsy subscription get it because it comes in a two-pack but if you want something that looks like it soar at mac is the one speaking of glosses over the lip my favorite hands down forget the filler by lawless it's the best gloss if you're looking for a gloss that looks like glass it's really juicy it's really goopy the doe foot is huge it has a like sweet smell to it not too overpowering and it just gives your lips the most beautiful shine it just is the shiniest lip gloss i've ever found i love it <laughs> and then runner up to that is natasha denona's lip foria this is just really good for when i have something maybe smokier on my eye and i really need a true nude lip this is mauve by natasha denona and it's just so nude it's like nude yeah that's a really nude lip gloss but i love it it's really nice i don't have either of those on right now i actually put like three different lip glosses on because i was trying to figure out which one i wanted to wear today but yeah and then as far as a lipstick that i can't live without that's also really lip colory lip colored on me is the valentino lipstick i freaking love this thing so much this is 123 r this is refillable so they're not going to put the name of the lipstick on this because if you refill it with something else it would be confusing these are refillable lipstick containers so you buy this and then you can just keep placing it in here for uh, a refill but this is also really beautiful with soar soar is just a couple shades darker and then you put this on in, in the middle of it and it just makes them look nice and pouty oh my god it's my favorite lipstick it's my favorite i got a tiny sample of it and then i was on sephora and they were on sale i got it for half off so i had to get it i had to Going lighter on the brows is a favorite. It's not necessarily a product, it's a idea. <laughs> so I feel like for the longest time, all of us had brow, bl brow blindness. I know I did. I've had brow blindness many, many times over. I mean, I think it's just naturally what happens when you're playing with different products. The fluffy brow was a thing. I didn't have fluffy brows, so I tried so hard to mimic it. I dyed my hair dark brown, and then I had a bunch of dark brown pencils. But then I went light, and I kept using the dark brown pencils. So I just feel like I got so stuck in this dark brow rut and then also just over penciling them in to uh, compensate for what I didn't have almost like I was over lining my brows the way you overline your lip I was over lining my brows the bleaching was a huge part in how I was able to go lighter with my brow product because I do have darker brows naturally so bleaching them was how I was able to get my brows light enough to where when I did use just a good old fat and taupe then my brows were starting to look more like my hair color and it looked better so if you even if you have like super duper dark dark hair it might look better if you're not going super dark on your brows you know what I mean but I don't like to tell people how to live their lives I'm just saying now if you're doing a crazy cool effect on your brow you're like cutting them really cool or you're penciling them in a really cool then that's your style and that's what works for you I'm just saying for the normal average person on a day-to-day -day, if you're trying to do a natural brow look maybe don't try to go so dark if you're blonde maybe try bleaching them and then using taupe so then you can get the shape that you want because when I take these off my brows are tiny like tiny <laughs> but I just fill them in and the brow pencil I've been using is the Dominique in taupe 
and I like it. I like the color, but I really think that any taupe would be good. I just like this because it's on a bit of a slant, so I can just go shoop, 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 but I have a little bit of a whip of a tail, but for the most part, that's makeup, but I feel like my brow shape has finally gotten to a place that I'm happy with. All right, next up, another thing that I've just recently been using, I got in my Ipsy, but I freaked out. If you saw the video, I was losing it over this, and I still am. Oh my, I'm, I already put it on today. I can punch a wall. I can punch a wall that smells so freaking good. The Utopia Vanilla Cocoa 21 by Kaylee perfume. This is gonna be gone and I'm not gonna have any left. Look how much I've already used. I think it came like a little shy. So I'm like, why? But I just really, really like it. I also don't have any perfumes that are brown. So that like really blew me away. I just thought it was cool. I'm like, oh my God, it's brown. This is definitely gonna be my, uh, my autumn fragrance. It's like jasmine and coconut and vanilla and it's like vanilla bourbon. I, this is my kind of fragrance. I like something to smell a little bit more cozy and warm and sexy. I'm not a floral girl as much, but I like it if a floral sneaks its way into a fragrance so it's got a little femininity to it, but it's not overpowering. And this is it. I'm obsessed. I love it so so much. So I need to make sure that I'm able to get this because this is my new favorite fragrance and I don't want to fall in love with something if it's not always going to be available. Now we're kind of going backwards. I'm going to talk about skincare and I'm going to try to do it kind of quick. This is the Grown Alchemist Polishing Facial Exfoliant. Mm got that kind of like spa treatment like when you walk into a spa room and it smells like essential oils it's got that vibe to it it just smells so nice so i actually just keep this in the shower the granules are so tiny on this which i really like too i don't want a super large exfoliator on my face i would rather use that on my body and my arms but when it comes to my face i like those micro fine really small little granules that go inside of these but it's great i love it and i love this packaging you guys know how i feel about these toothpaste bottles it's got that like metal toothpaste bottle feel to it i'm doing a blog post about all of this stuff and so if you want to find that list i'm just going to put that on the list in the description i'm not going to list everything in my description on youtube i'm just going to put it in the blog post and you can just click one link and it goes straight to my website it'll have everything broken down over there. It's just gonna be a list, <laughs> literally with maybe a couple pictures. Nothing crazy, but it's gonna be easy to access if you're like, what was that she was talking about? And I'm gonna have it categorized too. So skincare, makeup, blah, blah, blah. This is so good. The Murad Clarifying Toner. It makes your face feel like spearmint. It makes you feel a little cold. So when you put this on, if you're cold already, don't do it. <laughs> put a robe on, some cashmere socks, and warm yourself up before you put this on because the cooling effect it gives you and kind of really like radiates on your skin like peppermint for a minute then um yeah just be prepared for that because i didn't know anything about this when i put it on and i was like whoa it feels like it's really cleaning it feels like such an astringent yeah removes oil impurities and refreshes the skin witch hazel tightens the appearance of pores cucumber extract soothes yeah you can tell it's all that you can tell it says you can use it am and pm i have dry skin so that might be a little much for me i don't want to completely strip the natural oils on my face so I don't try to overdo anything that's like an astringent per, per se but if you're oily I could see how you can use this twice a day for sure so just use it based on your skin and the condition of your skin anyway speaking of uh skincare pharmacy honey grail hydrating face oil so luxurious it feels so special when i do my murad cleanser and my face feels really clean then i can go in and put a lightweight oil back onto my face it smells a little tinge of honey oh it's just so nice and rubbing it into your skin it's not sticky so it's not if when you think of honey it doesn't have a sticky feel to it but it just really feels nice i just feel like ah, oh, like i'm taking care of myself when i do my skincare i like it to feel good and smell good and just like you know really take that time for me in that evening small window of time and i do my skincare every single night i do not skip a night i haven't in decades it's very important to me to get a good night's rest and for some reason i always sleep better if i spray a little bit of this before i go to bed now i don't know if this is available i'm gonna try to find it and list it but i got this at home goods over by the candles 
well not the candles because that would be room stuff but this is like you know how the bath stuff is right behind the candle aisle I don't know if your home goes is like that oh it's got such a good smell I don't even know what this is it's by DW home it's called Urbane and it's just a room spray I love the packaging I love this it's so cute and it just looks like a little midnight you know midnight look to it but I just spray the room with this and make it smell a little bit more cozy it's a lavendery smell so if you're not a lavender girl I, I go back and forth sometimes I love lavender and sometimes I'm like do I like it I can't really tell I do but I don't like it I think the way that some people do I think some people love lavender so much I love lavender but I like it when it's mixed with stuff so this has a lavendery smell to it but it's not pure it's there's something else for some reason now i've like gotten superstitious if i don't spray it i don't sleep as good somebody who has night terrors sometimes and i get sleep paralysis i think that's another reason why i really value and treasure my sleep because of those things i'll do anything to prevent those things from happening so <laughs> luna spray it is i can't not have these i it's like i panic if i don't have moon drops <laughs> i have to have moon drops and they're homeopathic it has a vanilla flavor to it magnesium it says you can take more than one a night i've never done that one is enough I and I take these often and I've not become immune to them you know how like you take stuff enough and it feels like it's not working anymore I can take these still and they make me sleep I have a noise machine and earplugs too so I have all these things I have to do just to try to get a good night's rest <laughs> and this is so underrated I don't know why nobody's talking about it I don't know why nobody's talking about it I, I feel bad for anybody who gets just roasted constantly on TikTok or social media. I'm not into that. I, I'm not a witch hunt person I, and I'm definitely not a bully and I don't get into it. I don't know why I'm going on a big tangent about this, but like JLo, uh, JLo Beauty, this Baso Bomb is Baso Bomb. <laughs> Look at me, right in their commercials for them. It is the Ultra Hydration Lip Mask. Oh my God. And I'm really weird about lip masks ever since I did the Bite Beauty Agave Mask. I thought it was agave you guys i thought it was agave apparently it's just packed full of lanolin and i have a sensitivity to lanolin so i can't wear it if it's like loaded maybe if something has the smallest amount it might just make my lips tingle a little bit i can't really tell but i usually am very uh hyper aware of how my lips feel when i put on any new lip products i can wear this i can wear it it is so good it is the best feeling do you see how shiny my hand is but it's not like a chapstick that's sticky and so when you go to sleep it just kind of melts into your skin i just really like it i put it on i was like mm, ooh, my lips feel so good and then i woke up and they looked so plumped and like you know not a dry chapped lip in sight it was just great and then one more thing that i do um at night is i have this cracked heel balm another thing i got at home goods over by the uh you know shower section randomly it's coconut and shea butter but it's just a stick it looks like deodorant it smells like coconut and then i literally just lay in bed just draw this all over my heels my toes and the balls of my feet because i've had a lot of jobs back in the day where I was on my feet just non-stop all day and shoes that weren't the best for me and so I just permanently have calluses on my feet just permanently for the rest of my life probably so I have something in the shower I use to exfoliate it and then I try to remember to do this this is random and it doesn't fit into a category but I'm just gonna say it this Touchland power mist blue sandalwood scent not only is this the best packaging for a hand sanitizer because it's something about it. I love it so much. It goes in a brush belt so nicely. Just slides right into your brush belt. But this smell, mm, I don't get sandalwood at all from this. So freaking good. You know how whenever something is ocean scented, I remember back when Pier One did ocean stuff a lot and I would always buy it because it always smelled so good, like home fragrances. I love that ocean line usually. So it reminds me of an ocean or a rain fragrance. It's so good though. We have the Living Proof Heat Styling Spray. I've been using this uh, lately because not that I've been putting heat on my hair because these are the pillow curlers. I should have had those actually as my favorite. So I'll just put 
bit of photo care because I've been doing this a lot in the past couple of weeks as if you guys saw and they're just really soft curlers like back in the day you know the ones that we used to use back in <laughs> back in the day but they were so uncomfortable and the plastic would poke your head and if you're trying to wear them at night they're very uncomfortable but these pillow curlers come with like a little blanket around them and so it softens them up a little bit and they're so much more comfortable to sleep with so I really enjoy the, the pillow curlers quite a bit and they just have a wire that like folds around your hair and then I wrap my hair in a silk scarf and I sleep that way I wake up and it's done and it's heatless I love that but sometimes when I sleep I sleep in a certain way that one or two pieces of hair will kind of get frizzy and fall out of the curl and so I just hit it with some heat spray and then I'll go in with my wand and just give it a little curl so it'll match the rest of my hair and this is just to help protect my hair I'm trying to make my hair healthy and natural even though every time I see a video or a photo of myself with extensions in I'm so happy oh, I'm so tempted to put them back in I'm not gonna so we're not doing it but this this will help me keep my um, hair nice and healthy on my healthy hair journey and then this is a recent one Again, another one that I'm so surprised my last Ipsy gave me like three products that I love that I'm saying is in my favorites. That's impressive. It reminds me of dry shampoo as far as how it applies and just, you know, the, the container. But it's a three-in-one finishing spray. And it has been giving me when I'm doing these like pillow curls in between and I really don't want to have to style my hair every single day but I want volume because I slept on it you know so it's really helping me not have to wash my hair as much and look at how thick and full my hair looks my hair is not thick and full my hair is thin with a lot of it so I have a good amount of thin hair you know it's it's not ever thick look at the back of it though and you just put it in the root too, like up here in the root and give it a shake. I mean, who is she? Who is she? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. As far as beauty tools, I have two things to share that I've been really loving lately. One of them is the fact that I love putting on my concealer with a small buffy brush. I mean, I know that people really enjoy using beauty blenders, but I just still can't use the beauty blender as much. I'm just too lazy to go downstairs and clean my beauty blender and I can't use a dry one, I just can't. I just don't like the feel of it. It never applies my foundation right. It just feels wrong. It feels wrong when it's all hard. <laughs> I can't do it. So I have to use something that's just always available for me for a quick clean and I can clean a brush off with my brush cleaner while I'm up here but I don't have a sink up here too lazy so I use this and I love the way a little buffy I don't even know what brand this is so I can't recommend a brush in particular I'm just saying any little small I'll you know I'll find one that's similar to this because I don't know where I got this I go dot dot literally just that dot 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 tiny little on the tip of my nose and dot dot so it's one two three four five six seven eight nine nine dots of concealer on my face but I do it really quick so boop 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 and then that way when I take the brush I'm smoothing it out and it's not a thick layer of product I feel like if you wear too much concealer especially as you get older it can really start to crease and it's just so thick on our sensitive eye area that's a really sensitive eye but um, I'm trying to get back to where like my skin looks really healthy and smooth, you know? I think Erin talked about this in one of her last two videos that I edited. That's the great thing about watching her videos is I get to get reminded of some amazing techniques. And she was saying that she got this from Pat McGrath. I started thinking this is coming full circle because when I got a Pat McGrath concealer as like, it was part of a promotion they were sending out to small creators and I got to try it for free and it came with the brush. And when she said that, cause she used to work under Pat McGrath, that Pat McGrath always recommended using brushes for your concealer, like really small, fluffy brushes for your concealer. I started thinking, well, that would make sense why she gives you this with her concealer. So anyway, long story short, it's just this little angled situation. And this is a Pat McGrath brush that came with it. But now it makes me want to go buy the Pat McGrath concealer again because I forgot how much I loved that. But yeah, I've just been using this one because it's a little bit bigger and it just helps me cover the little spots on my face. So I'll put a brush that's like really similar to that in the recommendations. So the last thing as far as applicators, why was nobody telling me about this? Everybody went off about a beauty blender, a $25 sponge. People were going off and it is great. And there's a lot of knockoffs. Obviously the real beauty blender is far superior to all those cheapy ones and I like it I do no one has been talking about how amazing these little velvet soft 
sponges are. They have those little bands to hold on to. And something about the shape of this and pressing this into my powder, the past few days, because this is new, I've been doing it with the Eloise powder that I just got in my Ipsy, but I, any powder will do, any translucent powder will do. But like, I'm gonna show you on camera because this is amazing. It's amazing and it's so soft and it has multiple purposes, I'll explain. But you just get your powder on your little, your little dude. And then you just go underneath after you conceal. And you can get so close just like the Beauty Blender shape, but something about this being so flat, sometimes for me when I'm doing the Beauty Blender, I'm trying to get in here, it's just too big for that inner corner and it's too fat. Big and too fat, that flourishy. You know what I mean? So usually I would find myself squeezing it to get into these places and for what? <laughs> you know, and this is for dry ingredients. This is not for doing cream bases, but I love just how tight I can get in to that under eye area. And then I also just breeze it over the top of my eye before I do whatever I'm going to do. It gets into the corners here. So where I do my concealer, that's where I go in over top with this guy. And then whatever's left over, that's when I'll just kind of finish off the face with it. And it's wonderful. It's wonderful and they're so cheap. <laughs> you can get these in bulk for like, five bucks or six bucks, something like that. As a makeup artist, when you're doing makeup, a lot of times you don't wanna rest your hand on your client. So having a little sponge to set down, especially if you're doing eyeliner, if you're doing mascara, whatever it is you're doing, if you have this, or if you're using a powder on the eye and you've done the foundation and you're just doing touch-ups of powder, of like a shade or you wanna go a little darker or whatever, and you've already done their face, you don't want it falling out on that beautiful work you've done. Welcome to my life and my hell. So sometimes if you're just holding this underneath, you can do the mascara on the lower lashes with this. You can do the eyeshadow blending touch-ups that you need to do on the eye and hold this underneath their eye and it'll prevent the fallout. So I placed an order for a whole new set. I'll put them up here and they haven't come yet. I was hoping they'd come in time for this video so I can open them up on camera. Maybe I'll, I'll show them to you when they come, but that's an afterthought so I might not look like this anymore because I just tossed on this shirt for you guys. I'm gonna go throw on a t-shirt and do some housework. These, um, I'm, I got them in this beautiful emerald green color. I'm loving that color right now. I'm having an emerald green moment. I'm also having like a deep dark ox blood red color moment. Like those two colors right now speaking to my soul. So of course when I saw that they had these in that color I lost my absolute marbles. I've got a pack coming of a bunch more of these and I'm stoked on it. I will have those linked for you guys below. But uh, yeah it's a game changer when doing a lot of various techniques on yourself or as a makeup artist on your clients. Anyway, that's everything. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you are looking for these products, they will be on my blog in the description box, and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.